Hello, welcome to my new setup. So in this problem we have an elevator and it is accelerating upwards at one meter per second squared. It is starting from rest, so the initial velocity is zero meters per second. And the questions are, how much work does gravity does on the elevator? How much work does tension does on the elevator and what is the kinetic energy after traveling for 10 meters? I guess I can just leave it like that. So uh, the first thing that we have to remember is the definition of work, which is the integral of a force dot dx. Uh, the force is going to be given by the force of gravity in this case, right? For the tension, it will be the tension. But in any case, what you need is um, your free body diagram. So you have tension moving up. Gravitational attraction going down. And that's it, right? So your equation of motion from Newton's second law, sum of forces in y is going to be minus, because it's pointing down, mg plus tension equals mass of the whole um, elevator times the acceleration. So The mass, I forgot to mention it over here, is 1,000 kilograms. And this distance, right, uh, let's call it delta y, is going to be 10 meters. So it goes up from 0 to 10 meters. What is the change in kinetic energy? All right, so you know the mass. We know the acceleration. Uh, we know this mass is the same one. We know the acceleration due to gravity. So we can get tension. Uh, we can also get this one, right? So mg minus mg is uh, fg, so the force due to gravity. And it's going to be minus. 1,000 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And have our calculator here. We should not need it, but always good to make sure that you get the right answer. 9,800 Newtons, right? So kilogram times meter over a second squared. So this is the force. We can plug it in there. And it is constant. You know, the, the force of gravity, at least close to the ground, it's not changing. So we can take it out. It's still a dot product. 
the x and the integral of the x. And if you have not seen this in your math class, uh, well, tell me. You should have seen it by this time. I know there's uh, there's corona and all that stuff, but so let me know if you haven't seen this in your math class, calculus one. Uh, so the integral of dx is just x. Um, delta x, right? This is uh, from, the, in, this integral is from uh, zero meters to 10 meters. So this delta x is x evaluated from 0 to 10, which is just the 10 meters. So I'm going to leave it as delta x. Now, uh, here's the interesting part. You know, not difficult or anything, just interesting about this problem. Force of gravity is pointing down. The displacement goes from 0 to 10, so it's going up. And this is the dot product. So this is equal to fg delta x, the absolute values, times the cosine of the angle between fg and delta x. What is that angle? Well, fg is pointing down, directly down, and delta x is straight up. So the angle here is 180 degrees. And cosine of 180 degrees. minus one. So the FG had a negative sign in here, but we're just looking at the absolute value. Delta X was positive. We were just looking at the absolute value. The angle between them is 180. That means negative one. So this dot product is minus magnitude of fg, magnitude of delta x. What is that? Well, work due to gravity minus 9,800 newtons times 10 meters. That's going to be with the calculator, why not? 9.8 times 10 to the 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 joules. So the the answer given in the problem is 1 times 10 to the 5 joules, which yeah, is pretty close, rounding up. But this is more uh, exact. All right, um, let's do the whole thing again. But now let's do it for the tension. So the tension is MA, you have the negative here, so it becomes positive, uh, plus MG. So 
So the tension is M, acceleration times gravity. Gravity, we know it's 9.8, and acceleration is one meter per second squared. So the tension is gonna be mass, 1,000 kilograms. times 10.8 meters per second squared. Does that make sense? Well, yes, because there is a force of 1,000 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared pulling down. So if you want to move up, you need uh, a, an acceleration here total that is greater than uh, just gravity, right? So this is uh, the 10,800. Oops, this is a little ugly. Better. Newtons. Um, this force now, we're looking at the work done by tension. So this is the work done by tension, which we usually just call the tension. It uh, still goes from zero to 10. And the tension is constant. We still have the dot product of dx. dx, again, you know, from zero to 10. So this is times x, uh, dot x from zero to 10 meters. So that's just the 10 meters. Okay. Um, we have the magnitude. Again, we can use the uh, geometric definition of the dot product. So absolute value of t absolute value of delta x, cosine of the angle between them. We know the tension, we know the delta x. What is the angle between the tension and the delta x? Tension is going up, delta x is going up, angle is zero. And cosine of zero plus one. Right, so remember uh, the cosine function. This is zero, this is uh, pi over two or 90 degrees. This is pi or 180. This is um, three pi over two or 270 degrees. And this is two pi or 360 degrees. This is one, this is zero, this is minus one. So if the angle between them is zero, then cosine of zero is one. So this is just absolute value of the tension times absolute value of the displacement. Newtons times meter, that's a joule. So that's gonna be 10.8 times 10 to the four joules. Um, you can also say this is kind of 11. Uh, I mean 1.1 times 10 to the five, to the uh, fifth power, right? So just um, powers of 10. And luckily, that's the answer that we have from the problem. So now let's calculate delta k. 
the change in kinetic energy is equal to the work, the total work done on, on the elevator. Uh, and what is it? I'm gonna write this one as 10.8. It's to be a little bit Uh, well, the you have work and this one was negative. We should not forget that. Sorry that I didn't write it down. Uh, so this is negative work on the elevator, and this is positive work. So the difference is one times 10 to the four joules. All of that energy, all of that work becomes kinetic energy. So work, changing kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is one half mass final velocity, so I'm just going to leave it as V, squared minus one half of mv naught squared, the initial velocity. And what we can is the same mass, the mass is not changing. So this is V minus V naught squared. Um, squared here too. And the initial velocity is zero, so we can get rid of it. So the change in kinetic energy is going to be just that. Uh, we don't know the final velocity. But we can get it from the acceleration because it's one meter per second. So I'm going to remove this part. We can use this kinematic equation we pulled. Uh, we don't have the time. Uh, another option is this one. This one will work. We know the acceleration. We know the displacement. We know the initial velocity, which is zero. So the final velocity is going to be two times one meter per second squared times 10 meters, square root of that. So that will be square root of 20. That's 4.47, what are the units? Meter times meter, meter squared, over second squared, square root of this, meters per second as expected. So it goes from zero to uh, Uh, to 4.47 meters per second. So the work, one half of the 1,000 kilograms times the 4.47 squared, that's gonna be 20 meters per sec, meters squared, second squared. 
So this is the same as kilogram meter per second squared in Newton times meter, so joules. And so the work is Ten thousand. Joules. And that is what we have in the um, in the in the solutions as well. So uh, the other thing to notice is that you know here we use the acceleration, the kinematic equations, but The change in kinetic energy is going to be 10.8 minus 9.8 times 10 to the fourth joules. What is this? 1 times 10 to the four joules, 10,000. Which is the same. So now that we have this 10,000, you know, let's say that we had decided to do it this way, can we still get the velocity? Well, the velocity is going to be two times the work or the change in kinetic energy divided by the mass, square root of that. See if it works. Two times ten thousand joules divided by one thousand kilograms. Square root of these. Well, ten thousand over one thousand. That's ten. times 2, 20. Uh, over here we had joules, so kilogram meter square over second squared. And over here we have kilograms. So we can cancel this one with this one. This is the square root, so meter squared and second squared. We get the meter per second, 4.47 meters per second. So you can get it, you can get the velocity from the kinematic equations, knowing the acceleration, which of course is uh, due to uh, the force. Or you can get it from the work, which is the integral of the force that the displacement. So you can see you know, how uh, things are coming full circle, I guess, in the course. And you can see the a bigger connection. All right, uh, I hope you enjoyed this problem.